Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Morning. I'm going to throw it to David for introductions because this isn't my game. The panicked look you <laughs> <laughs> The fucking. No, don't. It, it just registered like, <laughs> I'm David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David. It's me. <laughs> oh no! Uh, morning, guys. Uh, welcome to Heroes of Hysteria: The Unearthed Inheritance Campaign. This is one of two campaigns set in the Hysteria universe in our post-apocalyptic homebrew world. Um, we have this one, uh, Unearthed Inheritance, featuring the wonderful blue button as Cress and the one and only uh, Commune. As Finn, but then we've also got another campaign over on YouTube, the Heroes of Asteria Sansi Saga campaign over at the Delta Crypted YouTube channel. Um, like Commune mentioned, my name is David. I go by Zen Okami in various places on the internet. Uh, he, him for pronouns. And if you don't see me here, you'll catch me on YouTube. And we have an Instagram in the works. It's it's still, it's pending. But yeah, that's me. Is it Commune? No, button first. I refuse. Oh. I was muted. Um, Hello, my name is Button. <laughs> my pronouns are they, them. I'm Blue Blue Button on the social medias. You can find me here on Sundays playing Cress, and then later on Known Realms Tolesh playing Echinacea. And then you can find you can find me doing other stuff, but I forget right now, so that's it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Alec, or Commune, my pronouns are he, him. You can find me all places on the internet, at Commune DM. I play here every other Sunday as Finn Reese, Goliath Rune Knight Fighter, uh, as well as uh, being the archivist for Known Realms Tolesh every Sunday night at 6 p.m. EST. Um, yeah, we do all sorts of stuff. You find me on the internet, do things. Um, guys, socials are the best. Fuck you. Socials are the best way to stay in contact with us and see what we're doing <laughs> and when we are indeed doing it. YouTube is up to date. Session two of Unearthed Inheritance will, or, uh, Known Realms Telesh will be uploaded later today. Uh, it'll, it's set to premiere at about one o'clock. So we're keeping those VODs up to date. There are bugs in my ear and I actually want to die. Please stop, Soundtail. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, YouTube is up and our merch shop is up and good to go. We got new merch. We got Known Realms merch. We got all that stuff in our new and updated Threadless store. Go check it out if you feel inclined. Um, and then Soundtail. Guys, Soundtail is the uh, amazing service we use to pump the ambiance, the music, the atmosphere into these games. So please go ahead and check out Soundtail at the link below and use them at your tables. We love Soundtail. They elevate these games and we're very appreciative for their partnership. Anything else? I don't think so. I can. Yeah, what well, button said? We love you. And David. Eight. Got it. Got it. We're getting, We're getting good at this. We're getting really good at this. All right. So, you guys ready then? Yeah. All right. Let's strap in. Let me find one note. All right. So, my friends. At our last Stop session. It, Stop <laughs> it! Stop it! It's flying away. <laughs> oh, no, no. Fuck. Um, at our last session, we began on the raised earthen columns of the Ironwood, a community now more hopeful for the future, courtesy of your actions. Thanks to you, a few of the Herongon children rescued from the Smith Underboroughs have been restored. Uh, you even managed to bestow both martial and magical knowledge to a company of fledgling Ironborn Rangers. And finally, after checking in with several allies as you prepared yourselves for the journey north, you have bid a fond farewell to that optimistic community of survivors. Now, we resume as you are on wing towards Damaril, the chill winds lifting you high over the smaller outlying craggy foothills. Um, you see some grassy hilltops. The sky overhead has continued to darken as the twilight deepens. Heavy mists have begun to settle and blanket the deep valleys of the canyons, and you, they obscure the forests beneath. You still see the tops of like the tallest trees that kind of creep up, um, also trees kind of up along the slopes and the sides of the mountain. And every now and then you continue to hear the cries and calls of life as life continues out here. Uh, and quick, just note for the audience, 
I have a new puppy, so you might hear him kind of squealing in the background once in a while. He has separation uh, anxiety. He's, he's just a little boy. He's, he's a little boy. He's working on it. Um, so, Cress and Finn, the two of you are stride Cuthbert. You feel the body of the drake just kind of pulsing beneath you, the muscles and the, the wings as they kind of <laughs> and flap. Um, I'll give you this opportunity to have any sort of like dialogue or discuss anything as you guys are making your way through. Ooh, um, the tablet that, mm -hmm. um, that Pim and Luna translated, um, the, like the gold one that Pim swiped, this, or like the scroll, sorry, um, gosh, one second, I have it in my no Finn, what are you doing? I'm bad and didn't find the thing. Hey, he was going to talk to Cress, but uh, we, we, we're we just going to wait till you find your thing. You're good. Yeah. And Finn, I should mention, so this is the same day. You guys have been on wing for a few hours, yeah. right? So you're you're slowly starting to kind of get your bearings aboard this beast, right? It's still, it's still a little unnerving. It's not quite like riding a horse. You know, when you ride a horse and you've ridden horses and stuff, right? You can kind of feel the bounce. This is more of like a, a sway as the muscles kind of tense and catch the wind, right? Mm-hmm. And I should mention it's it's chilly. It's chilly, but both with the two of you being Goliath and Sea Elf, not too bad at all for either one of you. Cold resistance, baby. Yeah. Um, so I'm referring to the captain's log that mm -hmm. was at the the gold plate from the Athenia yes. of the Storm Wardens. Yes. And I rereading this, I was like, I remember being dumb about this the last time, and I still can't remember, so now I'm going to ask again. Um, Storm Wardens are allied mm -hmm. with the yuan -Ti, correct? Correct, yes. In uh, historic war long ago, yes, they were allies with the yuan -Ti as well as the dragons. And the dragons, that's what I was about to ask as well. And then the giants were allied with the Pantheon of Oros. Correct, with the gods, the gods that eventually, well, the individuals that eventually kind of ascended to be the gods of Oros, yeah. Gotcha. And they were, they fought a bitter war that lasted generations, thousands of years, or a thousand years at least, between the giants and the dragons. Um, and it was, it was a very tumultuous time, multiple wars kind of going on, and then slowly... Axis powers and allegiances started to form and kind of erupted in like a world war scenario. Okay. Um, that was that was an age ago. That was exactly a thousand years ago. Yes. But well, actually, ended. so yeah, uh, the the last war that kind of like brought us into this era of peace was when the Republic of Omeron, a nation to the west and dominated most of the western continent of hysteria they broke away from the empire so that was more of a, a battle for independence um and but that was the last like on record at least large scale war the thousand year war arguably it had an influence on the last war it's a little bit of a debate um but for the most part that kind of ended you know about 500 years or so it, you know, the, but it, those dredges of the the battles and the strife kind of bleed in throughout the rest of the world and throughout time. Understood. Thank you for clarifying. I was yeah, like, no I took bad notes. Uh, no, you're um, fine. You're fine. There are a it lot is, of like is, storm warning question mark, QNT yes, question mark, and then no it connection. Is, I'm like, it's, it's it's pretty dense material. It's pretty dense inter inter global politics. But yeah. So knowing that the giants were aligned with the Pantheon of Oros. Um, Kressel just kind of glanced back at Finn as they are flying. Kind of weird question. Do you, um, do you worship any gods? Can't say that I do. Um, it's never really... I've been surrounded by it uh, more 
giant-like deific figures, but nothing I've fallen to worship upon myself. Ever heard of the flying castles of the cloud giants? David, have I ever heard of the flying castles of the cloud giants? Roll a history check at advantage. At advantage! Are you okay? <laughs> clear, your, clear your throat at advantage. <coughs> Cleared. Success. Nice. Uh, history check. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where is my history? Uh Oh, 19. All right. Okay, so, Finn, yeah. You have studied... Um, runes extensively and you're very you know familiar with the the ordning mm -hmm. the hierarchical structure of the giants right um mostly stone giants were kind of like your forte uh because they are kind of like the name of the game in rune carving yeah but um the cloud giants were no slouches themselves mm -hmm. and the cloud giants lived in a cloud city it was more cloud city states they had like different cloud sure. cities kind of throughout the world um and so you you've heard of those right but you know beyond kind of hearing of them and kind of knowing that they existed um you have not like you know no no further knowledge really beyond that <clears throat> sure it's kind of like you'd kind of like how you probably know about like atlantis or something right I know a lot in, in the real Atlantis. world. That's a okay. Fair point. Never mind. Maybe something less. Okay. Just Las Vegas. What I know. Okay. Yeah. Very unfamiliar with Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. So, so something more like it. that. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Something a bit esoteric. Um, yes. I've heard. I've heard of these cities, but I'm. I'm more familiar with the uh, uh, stone giants and their work and rune carving. But yeah, I've heard of these glorious cities. I'm sorry to ask strange questions. I'm just trying to puzzle together what happened, and I'm not doing a great job. Feel free to ask any question you deem strange at any point in time. It's not often that I'm given the opportunity of such enlightened company. I am not enlightened. You? <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> mm. So... You're the first person I've ever seen come in riding this beautiful creature. He sort of lightly pats. I, I'm, I'm going to keep praising you. Just give me a moment. You very skillfully de-escalated that situation with Gig. You helped train some greenhorns in a way that I wasn't going to be able to fully do by myself. I think you're quite intelligent. That is very generous. All I'm, all I meant to say is that I um, feel a bit out of my league. I think it's easy to feel that way with the way the world is right now. I often feel it. That is surprising. Really? Why? Because you're a mountain of a man. <laughs> <laughs> Even a mountain of a man can feel really small. Given where you guys are flying right now, that sentiment rings quite true mm -hmm. as you kind of are flying through now some valleys. Oop. You see mountains rising up on either side. Um up ahead there is an exceptionally large mountain that you can kind of see and there's kind of the land below you is mostly just kind of gray, roiling fog, right? Can I see something? Cress, your passive perception of 17 mm -hmm. is nothing to slouch at. And as you guys are flying, kind of, you know, flying through these valleys, you see, again, some trees that kind of peek out above the clouds that have settled at the bottom. And you can see what looks like a flock of ravens circling a tree. Roll a nature check. Or survival, your choice. Okay. Um, and you can roll as well, actually. Or one if you can roll at advantage. I will give Chris advantage. Oh, wow, thank you. It's been kind of points out. Damn! 
<laughs> Thank you, Finn. Uh, 23. Oh, okay. I went from a 10 to a 23. Get it. <laughs> that's, that's a good, that's why we like those advantages. Yeah. Um, as you're, you're kind of looking at it, you, you're you familiar with this kind of stuff, you know, kind of being out and about in the world. Um, and Finn, this is not an uncommon sight in the mountains of the, ne- in the foothills of the Nexenkov Mountain, where in which you grew up. Yeah. Ravens circling like this mean that something has probably died over there. Right, they're scavenging, looking, you know, making off with a kill or something. Mm-hmm. You see Cuthbert also kind of <sighs> takes a little bit of an interest as you guys are gliding over. Cuthbert, do you remember that strange elf? <sighs> Deep grunt of, with your connection, you can sense recollection. Let's feel the same. <sighs> um... Roll an insight. An advantage. It's Cuthbert. <laughs> I rolled a one. Okay. Oh. Um. No, I... So, ten plus... What am I rolling? Insight. insight? Fifteen. Mm-hmm. Fifteen. Um, you can tell it's a, a sense of frustration. It's difficult to tell for, for him from this distance. And again, those that you encountered were shapeshifters, right? Very difficult to, to differentiate, you know, maybe by behavior of close, but at a distance like this difficult to tell. You guys are about, let's say, like 100, 200 feet away. 200 feet away. Is that something you want to check out? I'm curious. I'm at your back. um, (laughs) I'm grateful for it. Be careful. (laughs) (laughs) Giant ass. (laughs) There there are entities called the Scarlet Sash. Um, Elves from the Shadowfell are shapeshifters. They're not necessarily enemies, but they um, aren't necessarily friends either. But I do want to look. Let's look. Okay, how do you guys approach? Kind of closing in, flying in, landing away ways, or... I would like to not land yet. Um, I would like to do a wide circle around the tighter circle of ravens and and see what they're circling. Sure. All right. Absolutely. So Cuthbert kind of, you know, you kind of lead with your knees uh, the way you've been taught, you know, um, and Cuthbert kind of takes banks, you know, one big flap and kind of glides a nice smooth glide across the wind. Um, you guys are sitting now at a slight angle as you guys are kind of taking a peering, peering down. Uh, perception checks, please. Either at one at advantage or you guys can. I will give roll. Cress advantage on a perception check. I I figured that's always kind of the safer bet, so I want to make sure that offer. I'm there. like, I ain't gonna get shit in comparison. We'll just say we'll say there's a standing offer, but unless you guys declare it, um, that makes sense. It doesn't. Count. Chris gets for, yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> um, all right. it was good. I rolled a 19 on the dice for a 26. <laughs> Jesus Damn, Christ, that's, that's that's really good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. So and Finn <laughs> just, for the just for flavor, Finn's like, I'm not fucking seeing anything. <laughs> 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 yeah, as just as you're like trying to zero in on it, and Cuthbert gives another kind of like beat of the wings, and again, you guys are sitting at like a 45 degree angle, oh, right? and you feel you feel your your right hip kind of start to slide off his back just a touch, and you kind of grip tighter. Um, but Cress, you peer through the branches. You can see the ravens kind of circling. You see, there's kind of that outer flock of ravens that are just kind of now very wary of you guys as you approach, as they've kind of clocked Cuthbert. Um, Several of them are kind of now like just kind of flying off and kind of taking away the space. Um, but as you peer into the trees through the canopy, you can just make out that they seem to be very interested in something caught on some of the upper branches. And with your 26, as you continue your way around, it looks vaguely humanoid shaped. It looks like, um, as you kind of come around, it looks like someone's kind of like slumped over one of the branches at the top. They are not moving as ravens kind of land. There's some ravens who are a little bit bolder who are kind of landed and kind of picking at the body. Content warning incoming, guys. Um, I got it. I got it, I got it. Um, they will call out, I think, to both the ravens and this entity. Is there something happening here? The entity doesn't respond as it continues to lie motionless on the branch. Um, the ravens 
seem to several again several of the bolder ones continue kind of pecking away at the at the body and you can see they're kind of like pulling away little stuff little bits um whereas a lot of the others have kind of now taken notice of you and they're kind of wary some are more committed they haven't quite flown away yet um but as you're kind of approaching roll an animal handling please animal animal no uh nine i rolled a two okay, okay. Um, they appear to just be kind of raven scavenging what what they found here. Okay. Um. What do you think, Finn? Am I taking a closer look? Not at all. This looks to be a bit of a mysterious sight. I'm happy to look a little closer. Plus, easier to be on the same page. All right. Um, I think as they'll they'll direct Cuthbert to kind of like close the circle um and i think as they near one of the ravens they will just say to it here scarlet sash please don't beat the shit out of us i'm not trying to start anything <laughs> and then they'll head in okay uh, as you kind of make your way by kind of circle in right you see as you guys come in there's kind of an eruption of feathers as they kind of all kind of flap away Right, you kind of make your your plea to them as they're kind of going by. They seem to ignore you, though, as they kind of all take off. These appear to be irregular run-of-the-mill ravens, as okay. especially with Cuthbert kind of coming in, their instinct is, "Ooh, big creature, back off." We leave. We leave. We don't. We don't <laughs> fight this. Um, and you see, they actually kind of go away a ways. But as you kind of watch Crest, they some of them settle in some of the near branches, kind of maybe just waiting for you guys to be done and move on. That's um, fair. But. You're able to kind of do you try to land you guys land like touch ground or it's in the high treetops right it's in the so high treetops so it'd be a bit of a climb from the bottom but you can maybe try to land on some of the upper branches cuthbert is a pretty big creature but these are if... yeah i don't know if they direct him to land okay i think they just want to get closer get closer sure tighten okay. the circle okay tightening the circle getting in closer the raven's now kind of scared off and you guys now have a very solid beat on it um, we'll say another perception check at advantage or investigation. I'm bad at that. Okay. Take advantage. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> um, you're both bad, but that's fine. Um, you're closer. DC's, DC's lower. Like, so as you guys kind of come in, you can see now through the branches. Yes, it does look like an adult figure, an adult humanoid figure. Um, as you can kind of get in a little bit closer, you see uh, silvery, possibly blonde hair, right? Kind of draped long over. Um, and you can see the branch is kind of coated in, and some of the lower branches as well, coated in slick, viscous blood. As the creature is lying, bleeding on that branch, unmoving, unresponsive. Um, with your 15 kind of still closing the gap and your previous 26 now studying this a little bit longer one thing that you do note are pointed ears this individual looks to be of possibly elven heritage um finn. sorry real quick finn roll an investigation check at advantage please okay i guess i can do that i believe in you <laughs> bless you button bless you <laughs> Investigation, you said? Yes, please, sir. Uh, 15. 15. With a 15, um, you recognize, maybe not the individual, but some of the armor and the cloak. This looks to be, you notice the kind of uh, rust red kind of cloak uh, draped on the back, um, kind of gray with red trimmed armor. Um, and you recognize this as one of the Ironborn Rangers, possibly dressed in similar garb to one of the Ironborn Rangers. They're wearing Ironborn Ranger attire. Look, um, as soon as we get within 120 feet, they will send a Balm of the Summer Court to this individual in the hopes of making them a little less dead, maybe. Okay. Unless it's too late. Well, you send over your Balm of the Summer Court if you would give us the flavors of this, please. Some morning yeah. Balm flavors. Morning Balm? Um, it's actually very aquatic, um, which mm. is obviously unusual for the current setting mm. we're in, but this the this moat 
of teal light flicks from their fingers, and as it nears them, they kind of, it breaks into five different pieces, and those pieces hover over different injuries on this individual and sink into the skin as they, if they're not dead, heal for five points and gain one temp HP. Unfortunately, they are deceased. Um, as your as your ability takes hold, as the moats kind of enter the skin, you see no response. All right. Well, we shouldn't leave them here. No, I was thinking the same thing. Um, I can I can try and grab them. All right. Um. I, they will take out their 50 feet of hemp and rope adventurer. Mm -hmm. um, tell you what, how about <laughs> <laughs> but we try and kind of lower you down um, or just give you something to hold on to if, if it, um, how high up are these branches? Uh, from the floor, probably like from the yeah. forest floor, uh, probably like 40 feet. Yeah, just in case. All right. I could take it. <laughs> he starts tying a rope around his waist. I'm sure you can. I just uh, don't want you to. No, fair, you um, know what? That's very kind. Uh, tie so you're tying the rope. Yeah. And then... Slide a hand from you. Oh, <laughs> I'm you'll gonna need fall. One, <laughs> you'll need one from Crest, too, because they're gonna tie the other end to the handle of the saddle of the cavalry. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The palm will just kind of... Okay, yep. Both slide of hand checks, please. Do I have advantage on side of hand? I do. Thank fuck. <laughs> it's a nine, David. Okay, so the advantage roll was a natural one, buddy. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the seven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That 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 makes sense. I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was the and highest press. roll. What was I yours? also didn't roll great, but I rolled better. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Wonderful. We're just... doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine like Wiley e. Coyote, like yeah, boy. So you guys kind of make your way. Uh, <laughs> Cuthbert kind of like banks around, kind of grabs onto the top of the tree to kind of steady himself, kind of using his wings to kind of even out. Uh, Finn, you've got your the rope kind of tied around your waist <laughs> as you kind of begin to repel. Super secure. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep, as far as you believe, uh, you make your way down to the branches. Uh, the rope, as you're going, gets caught in some of the branches, right? And as you kind of go to to pull it, son of a bitch, um, it it holds fast on Cress's end, right? But you, in the process of pulling, right, you slip a little bit more, and it gives it your waist, and you drop down. I need a dexterity saving throw, please, as you are kind of just crushing through some branches on the way down. This is only about like a twenty foot fall. So, uh, from where Cuthbert kind of had to land to be able to get onto above it. So only 1d6, if... <laughs> How are we looking? It's a 5, David. Okay. So this 20-foot fall, <laughs> you crash through the branches as you're kind of making your way... <laughs> um, you pass the body very quickly, right? You go to reach out to grab onto one of the lower branches, but it is slick with blood as you your grip slips, right? You, you're going to fall at full 60, but Can I... minus the first 10 feet. Yeah? No, I failed. Never mind. Keep going. Yeah. So that's 5d6. So the 20 feet up top plus the 40 below, 60 feet minus the first 10. Fuck me ah! up. Fuck me up, David. 5d6 bludgeoning. Am I going to oh, no. die? Um... Wait! Oh, it's not a it's not a reaction. Never mind. Fuck! What were you looking at? It's gonna entangle you to the tree, but mm, I don't I can't do that classic. as a reaction. Classic. This is a good roll, my friend, unfortunately. Fuck uh, so you! That's, <laughs> that's twenty bludgeoning damage. Oh my guts half of my hit points. There's a six, a five, oh, and two, oh three, and four. <laughs> oh shit. I, I no got one. so Spence says I can take it, and then <laughs> Takes it. And yeah, it Chris, it. You, it. You, you feel you feel the rope kind of very tight on the pommel <laughs> of the saddle, right? It kind of pulls a little bit, and then all of a sudden it just gets slack, and you oh. hear a crash. Shit! Spin. Oh, yes, were... Come on, cover. Then you land, you land in a pool of oh. blood. 
Uh, but it's not your blood. Oh. As you look around, you can tell, not wounded, the body above you has just been kind of leaking down. Oh, fuck. Sort of sits up. Wow. Oh. Fuck. Okay, never mind. You, I'm sorry. You're right. I, sh I shouldn't have taken it. Boo. <laughs> That's a rough fall, my friend. Ow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I apologize. For what? Falling. Um, <laughs> He looks, he takes out, because I believe he has a healing potion. You have a couple I gave you. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple, yeah, I think you've got um, a couple. I've got two, Did so. You put them in your, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 So he'll take, he'll fucking just, <laughs> he'll take <laughs> both of those. Um, So those are both a, 2d4 plus 2. A potions in my game are full. So Whoa! So 10 each, so 20. Okay, so I'm fine. I'm back to full. <laughs> You're back to full. Chris will kind of... take the bottles back from you. All right. <sighs> Sorry, I just I figured it wouldn't make sense to have you waste your skills this early in the day. Uh, that is deeply appreciated. They hand you another potion of oh, healing. Oh wow! Thank you so much. You're very wow. Very. I made a lot of these. I know yeah. you make those, but very... I am rapidly running out. <laughs> okay, well we'll find we'll find it's stuff fun. to make more. Oh. Yeah. Might have to visit the jungle again. Uh, no. Okay. Um, so you guys are now at the at the bottom of this tree. Um, the forest mm. here is dense. And Cress, one thing I will say too, this is not like the jungle where things were like baking in the heat kind of thing. The air out here is actually quite moist. There's a lot of you can tell there was a lot of water still in this area, and it's it's the air is actually damp and quite cool. Um, and the forest, I mean, it's not. It, it doesn't seem to be that that hurt. You know, quite as devastated as the jungle was you know, protected by these mountains. And you hear, you know, wildlife all around you, bugs chirping. Um, and you kind of like look through and it's just, you know, dense forest all the way around. Body still up at the top. You <sighs> see, um, roll perception checks, please. Oh. I give Cress er, advantage. Cress advantage. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. They got them good eyes. Mm -hmm. 13. I rolled bad. I rolled a 2 and a 7. What, for for Prostate, let's see what I would have rolled. A 4. Again, 14. I don't think that's going to beat it. So, okay. Yeah. Um, Bless you. That, so, yeah. Uh, you don't pick up anything else additional at the moment, at least. Other All than... right. <sighs> okay. I can get big and climb the fucker. Uh, I can... I can climb it. Um, brace yourself. I'm going to be a spider again. I'm I'm super comfortable with the spiders now. Don't have to lie to me. And they turn well, to... Well, quick, wait, quick time out, quick time out, time out. Because I don't want you to, like, waste resources unnecessarily. Like, this is a this is a fairly climbable tree. It was just kind of bad rolls, right? There... You, you can attempt a climb. I mean, you could absolutely do the spider climb, but I'd hate for you to, you know... Burn a whole resource on something that's the DC is not actually too difficult to climb this thing. That makes sense. A very kind a combination of, of tough rolls. Yeah. Would it be athletics? Yes, it'd be athletics. So climb. above table would make it would just make more sense for me to attack. Yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I would, He's gonna. I would just feel bad if Crest like burns that. No, wild that shape, makes sense. You know? That makes sense. He'll sort of Finn will just sort of stand up, <laughs> trying to look proud. <laughs> <laughs> Time to redeem myself. <laughs> <laughs> All but right, he will. Ahead, what he will do is the because the rope is still up on Cuthbert, correct? Uh, yeah. So they came down. Would I be able to? Because I adventurer, I also have fifty foot rope. Yeah. Um, absolutely. could I could I move on this? Sure. Where like yeah, I wrap absolutely. it around the tree and just kind of yeah, 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 it yeah, as like leverage to kind of help myself up. Yeah, 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 I'm into that absolutely. Um. So yeah, Cress will just see as he kind of takes it. Uh, the rope ties it around one side of the belt, loops it around the tree as best he can, ties it around the other side as he begins to ascend or try to. Yeah. Go ahead, roll that <sighs> athletics. Athletics is bread and butter. Um, F. You motherfucker. Skills, that's where it is. Uh, yeah, athletics is a 21. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, you're. You see as Finn kind of gets the rope around the tree, around his waist, kind of hooks him on the hands, and then kind of like almost just marches up this fucking tree. Just 
right? Occasionally, even kind of having you you run into branches, right? And you just kind of like prop yourself up, every, swing it back around. And every time he looks your... at a branch, he's like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> he <Yeah. keeps> climbing <laughs> up. <laughs> you step on it with a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra. Yeah. Um, Chris looks you're... at Cuthbert as he's doing this. I should just stop having ideas because they get people hurt. <laughs> and he's clearly fine doing this. Cuthbert kind of just nudge. Um, you get up to the body. Yep. Um, he'll just sort of take, try and grab it as delicately as possible. Sure. Um, and just throw this individual over his shoulder and just begin his descent. Yeah, I'm going to keep that same roll that you rolled earlier. You okay. know, even with the 21 with the added weight of the body, you're, you're still a Goliath. Okay. And climbing and, you know, you grew up in the mountains. Climbing and stuff like this is, you know, what you did as a kid. Um, sure. And you go ahead and make your way down. a lot then, too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's how you learn. Why well, do we I, fall, Bruce? Uh, so we can get back up again, Master Wayne. There you uh, go. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he'll kind of make it back down and ge- very gently put the body on the floor. Okay. All right. Yeah. You lay the body out, and then you kind of look over now. The person, you know, kind of clearing the hair out of the face, you can tell. Um... First off, without any checks, this person is this individual seems to be a wood elf. Not uncommon in the Ironwood. Um, not uncommon among amongst the rangers. Um, mm-hmm. But as you guys examine the body, I need investigations or medicine checks. Your choices. Advantage on Cress's medicine. Yay. All right, Cress, get us that medicine. Yay! Cool. Um, uh, 19. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Okay, 19 is an excellent role. This individual, again, content warning, um, looking over this individual, you can see they are heavily wounded, um, that they are the victim of um, a very serious attack. Um, you see deep uh, gashes and gouges across the torso, and in fact, at the sternum, you can actually see that the chest cavity has actually been broken open. And what was your check? 19, I believe? 19. With a 19, as you kind of take a look, you know, kind of examining closely with your 19, you can tell that it looks like this individual's heart Ugh. was taken out, removed. And you can see deep gouge marks and gashes all across the chest, the neck, the body, the face. So this was a violent... Vicious attack. This attack seems certainly savage. It's not like a clean, just duel or anything. What are you getting? The heart has been removed. You know of anything that would... I would do that? Uh, unfortunately, I know of several. Oh. Delightful. I know that there are entities in the Whispering Jungle who are seeking out the hearts of certain animals. I know that it's an old orcish tradition to consume the heart of an enemy to gain its strength. David, do I know anything else? Roll... Let's go with nature. Neat. Nature. And actually, Finn, I'm mm-hmm. going to have you roll as well. Why? Nature? Nature. 16. Oh, that tracks. <laughs> um, 15. 15. You guys have both heard of creatures that live in the mountains. Finn, the reason you get this check is because of your ah, your history. Makes sense. Mountain predators that would attack humanoids, specifically favoring elves, half-elves, and humans. Uh, a creature uh, known as a periton. Oh, Are no. <laughs> large <laughs> birds of prey that were known to be the banes of travelers that would traverse the mountains. Um... And Cress, 
So you both know that. Cress, though, with your 16, I'm going to give you this because your role is the higher, mm -hmm. right? Cress, you are aware that there is a myth about the Periton where their shadows actually appear humanoid and do not reveal their avian form. Uh, okay. <laughs> they are common, <laughs> common enough mountain predators that, again, travelers would keep a very wary eye out, hide, should they come across a strange shadow that they did not know. They pass that along. Um, mm. There is a creature in these forests called the Periton. It assumes the hearts of elves, half-elves, humans, and they cast a humanoid shadow. Yeah, you see you see that bit of recognition when Peri, uh, Periton is said, and then you they, they talk about the shadow and there's this just concern and processing. Right. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, do we want to take any action on this? Look for I this mean, creature. They're fairly common. There are a lot of them. I wouldn't say they're like, they're, they're not like, the most common creature out there, but they've, they've been known to be a hazard. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not interested on... It's really hard to say. It roll... isn't, isn't a monster. Can I have the two of you roll history checks independently? No. <laughs> uh, <sorry>. 15. <laughs> Finn, you do recall, as you were sitting here looking at this Ironborn Ranger, you know, studying the garb, you, your memory just kind of trickles back to your last interactions with the Ironborn Rangers, and you recall that Lenza had mentioned um, that there was a scouting party. They were waiting. You know that the Rangers don't typically travel alone. There could be others. I have every reason to believe that this is a member of the scouting party. That makes sense. I just... I'm not looking to find this thing and kill it. I'm looking to save lives. Trust me, I deep, I deeply respect and understand the question of what is a monster. This thing lives here. It's a natural part of this environment. Uh, I just, um... You want to look for them then? At least for a little bit. We don't. Damaril is the priority, so. Let's go to Damaril. On the way back, though, once we find Granny Mal, we could take a look. There's this expression of guilt on Cress's face. And it's May 23rd, correct, David? Uh, in game at the moment, it is. Yeah, May 23rd. It's roughly uh, like evening. So you guys left kind of, you know, late morning uh, mm -hmm. from the Ironwood. So you're looking at like about five o'clock in the evening, right? Okay. Um, why don't we take the rest of the evening and look? Lenz's people deserve care just as much as anybody else.
I just respect that there's a, a big priority here. I want to look at the situation with a bit of realism. Obviously, this person's dead. It makes the possibility of the others meeting the same fate much higher. Which is why I'm... I'm okay moving forward. I trust your judgment. I don't know what my judgment is. I'm not a leader. I want to look for them, but I also want to go to Damaril. Damaril is the priority. That is what I agree to. So if it makes more sense to go to Damaril and stop here on the way back, I'm fine with that. We can take a moment to think about it. Press just looks around at the space, up in the trees and then down at the ground as they'll try and suss out whether or not it looks like any of the other Ironborn Rangers were here. Sure. Roll that perception or survival. To be more, it's kind of like in that tracking range. Survival! Uh, 17. Okay, with yes. 17, you're kind of glancing around, right? As you make your way kind of, you know, around the tree, examining the forest beyond. The light, it's pretty hard to reach through the canopy. So there's a little bit of a darkness, but it's not anything that encumbers you. Um, as you look around with your 17, you do find feathers, darkened feathers, um, or, you know, dark plumes. Um, Looking around, you also spy a small little glimmer, a metallic glimmer that kind of catches your eye. And granted, a lot of the trees out here are ironwoods, right? So metal isn't anything rare out here. You even have, you can taste it in the air. There's that kind of like tangy ferrous taste in the air, right? But there's something that kind of just catches your eye, a small glimmer, just a ways away from the tree. Do you investigate it? I do. They'll crouch down okay. by it. As you get a little bit closer, you can see a uh, leather straps kind of tangled in some brambles. But what caught your eye was actually the head of an axe. Right? A little uh, uh, one-handed kind of grip uh, battle axe. As you look at it close, coming in, you know, you handle it. You can get a sense of magic coming from it. Right? Finn, as you see Cress handle this thing, you recognize this. These axes are given to um, some of the, like, for rangers, the, the next tier of ranger. Um, those that have trained over at the Sanctum Metallica uh, with the monks, uh, The these guys are called Iron Wardens, and they have, they bear these uh, ironwood axes. It is, the axe itself is, the grip has a very, like, wooden bark kind of texture, right? But metallic. And then the head is actually just worked in. It's not like fastened to the top. It's actually a part of the worked wood. It's folded repeatedly upon itself to give it a very sharpened edge. Um, and you know that these are earned after working or after, you know, time spent studying with the monks. So this ranger was no slouch mm. is what you can kind of glean just based on the weaponry that he carried. Um, like I said, it has a faint magic to it as well. I imagine this was some sort of team leader. I don't know if my conscience can handle leaving that person's team to the wilderness then. Let's just take the evening. 
Let's just see if we can find anything. Okay. Could I see the the axe for a moment? Give it to him. He, he will do that magic. spend a minute uh, and use his runic feature to identify. Okay. I'll get you the link for the axe. Yeah. You can add it to your inventory if you are the one to handle it. I don't think he's going to just use it out of re respect. Okay. He, he knows he hasn't earned this. That's right. Here you are. See if it works for you. I posted it in, in the Discord general chat for you. Whoop. Okay. Yep. I see it. Okay. So, yes, that battle axe is currently in your possession. Okay. Um, All right, what do you think? We mount up, we look for him. Yeah, mount up. Move, move about the wood and see if we can get an eye on anything or maybe spot anybody else. But given the way that this animal operates, be mindful of the shadows and watch each other's backs, which is fairly easy. So. He's just going to kind of move forward and, and put a hand on Cress's shoulder. I apologize. I understand that this is difficult. Gotta stop apologizing for things you don't do. And they um, will kneel down and take out a blanket from their pack and wrap up this body. It, they should be able to bury their dead. I agree. Okay. All right. Finn will sort of just take it and sort of tuck it behind some of the foliage on the ground just for. A I, I want to take it with us. Um, I, Cuthbert has sidecars. Oh, OK, 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 OK. Um, Got it. Then he doesn't do that. So they will load after wrapping up the body, they will take it with them and they'll remount Cuthbert. Extend a hand to help Finn up. Takes it. <laughs> gets up. Almost almost pulls Cress off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'll like compensate by just grabbing the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cress, you, you go to extend the hand, but don't worry, he kind of does most of the lifting still. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. I got you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to have to pull your fucking arm out of your socket. <laughs> The hand no, just, just lost in the mob. <laughs> <laughs> Grabs All the right. entirety of their forearm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um, body kind of set just kind of behind where you would be sitting, kind of, you know, um, straddling uh, Cuthbert's like just the end of his shoulders or just the tops of his shoulders. So you kind of mount in front and then Cress mounting on the saddle. Um, Cuthbert gives kind of one look around, right? Waits for your cue, Cress, and gets it. Snorts. <laughs> Erupts. <laughs> wind. Uh, warm wind breeze just kind of blowing up uh, leaves and twigs. The wings kind of <laughs> expand and beat. As he launches upwards, kind of grips one of the ironwood branches and kind of leaps off the wings, kind of straining <laughs> one time, twice, thrice, and finally <laughs> one final time and <laughs> catches the wind. It starts soaring forward again. Right. I'd like to keep my eye out for human move, humanoid movement. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Just knowing this area, is it possible to give Cress advantage just knowing this region? So just sort of pointing out areas that may have been open, knowing the, the habits of this creature? Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only the creature, but also just your relationship with the Ironwood Rangers. Yeah. So yeah, Cress, go ahead and make that roll for us. Okay. Okay. One of those is a one. Well, um, oh my god, guys. What is with the ones today? Thank God for these advantages. Yeah, oh. um, but it is 11 for an 18. Oh, hell okay. yeah. Okay. And, I'm, and, you know, I, I really like what Alec brought up just now because that really fits into something I was thinking about, too. As you guys are moving along, um, 
been, as you kind of describe, you know, the region, you've worked with the rangers before, you've actually, you know, maybe not patrolled this quite far, quite this far north, but you've gotten up into the, the past the foothills and into the, the, uh, the Iron Hills proper. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are making your way along and you, s up ahead, Cress, you see, as Finn kind of points out, you know, kind of along those kind of flatter regions, those kind of flatter cliffs is where the Ironwood Rangers would often set up like little watchtowers and stuff. Um, and sure enough, though, as you guys are approaching, you actually see one of those same watchtowers. It is more of like a tripod. Imagine three trees. The branches are just kind of taken off, so there's just kind of a column of a tree. Imagine three trees kind of propped up uh, against each other in like a tripod, lashed together in the middle so that it has kind of an hourglass kind of figure. And then there are platforms um, and different at the, at the top tier and kind of in the middle, just above the lashing. And you can see branches kind of fastened along, you know, different sides of this tripod to form a ladder. Um, the Ironborn Rangers were notorious for making these kind of structures as, you know, watchtowers that they can kind of use to keep an eye out across the way. Um, as you approach such a such a site, um, you come in and you see that it is seems to be uninhabited. But now we'll take, uh, what was your perception again? Uh, 18. 18. 18 is really good. Yeah, so not only is this uninhabited, but you can also see signs of looks like battle. What looks like there was a fight here. You can see as you approach, um, kind of using your elvish eyes, um, Legolas, you can see um, <laughs> a, a fireplace, a, a small campfire that has been very quickly just kind of brushed aside. You can see um, drawn weapons, broken arrows, um, crossbow bolts, you know, as you kind of approach. Um, do you guys, do you guys like to land and investigate further? Yeah, I'd like to see. They land with the intent to discover what they were fighting. Any clue sure. if it's more, um, of a Puritan or if it's something else? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you fly over, or it touches down. And you begin your investigations. So let's see. Uh, investigation rolls. Um, as you guys kind of now landed, walking out across this campsite, the tower seems to be still intact. For the most part, it's upright. Is that a one? Yeah. Same. You guys. You guys. Okay. Um, that's all right. The dice have spoken. God damn. <laughs> I just want to function. Uh, I will say. I will say we will rely on descriptions and and our own collective intelligences if the dice are going to fuck us uh, like this because you guys are you've landed and the fact that you roll a one doesn't actually change the fact that these things are present in this in this area um you look around you see again large deep gouge marks in sides of the the tripod watchtower you see um drawn weapons broken arrows the heads of which have kind of like fallen in the dirt um, you see more dark feathers, similar to the one at the site where you found the initial elf. Um, based on that, even with your ones, you can determine this is similar. Right. That they're, they were... This area, I will say, does look somewhat... The, the tracks and stuff, Cress. They're a little bit older. The dirt's very cold. Um, the air's kind of dried out some of those tracks, so they look, while they're still formed and stuff and clear, they look older than what you had kind of seen before. Um, looking out, you can see this area is raised somewhat, and you can kind of see the uh, where you'd found the body initially. Um, and as you look out, let's try one more time. Perception checks? I give Cress advantage. Okay. <laughs> I'm... Putting that dice away. Was it a one? To the jail. Yeah. To prison. Okay. Um, what was it in Spanish again? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, calabroso. Yeah, um, that one. <laughs> the dice da, 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 da. The dice calabroso. Um, what did, I can't do math. 14 <laughs> plus 7. 21. Oh, 21. Okay. 21. Now we're talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> So yeah, Chris, the inspiration you're, you're is kinda... as flavored as Finn going like, please, 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 please. <laughs> we need, we need, we need a lead here, guys. We need a lead. I need your um, Elvish eyes. <laughs> you, you're, you guys are taking it all in. 
um, making your way through the campsite. Uh, you see, Cress, you look out, you can see where the body was found, kind of scanning over the horizon. You see there is somewhat further out down the hill, down the valley, you see the blanketed fog, and then all of a sudden you see there's a little bit of disturbance as something large kind of has emerged out of the fog and on the wind in this space echoing throughout the valley you hear coco coco it's coming back kind of yelling from Where? down in the valley down in the valley um like I we're moving like, they grab finn and they <laughs> melt cuthbert <laughs> Cuthbert, Cuthbert immediately also responds as you kind of start, you turn and start making the move before you're even like like two paces towards him. He's at your side and you can kind of like grip onto one of the spikes on the back and full on Legolas. Yeah, 100% right Legolas yeet onto and then just grab him. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted. But I imagine that's the expression as the wind is rushing by. <laughs> you're still muted. Eat my fucking ass. <laughs> I, I said, <laughs> Finn in a panic looks at Cuthbert, like not even registering that he is already good to go. He's like, you hear that? We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> he like pops on. Yeah, you you hear Cress. You you look over. You turn, and there's Cuthbert like already like halfway towards you. Oh, okay. Cress, you, okay. you watch Cress kind of hook onto the spike, jump up. The hand reaches out, and this time kind of grabs yours. And God, you're fucking you cool. <laughs> Gets up. Kind of I'm kick not. Off Cuthbert's front leg. <laughs> The two of you are mounted up, and Cuthbert kind of dives off the side. Uh, Finn, this is particularly unnerving, as Cuthbert kind of just gallops towards the edge of the cliff and just leaps off, Ooh. wings still furled, as he kind of starts this nose dive off the side of the cliff, and then just as you think you're going to hit the tops of those trees, the wings flare out and kind of catches the wind, glides, and as you guys are coming, you hear the screaming, Coco! Coco, where are you? Coco! As... You kind of now start banking up and lining up along the river. You look out and let's get another round of perception checks for me real quick. Advantage. Crouched down, crouched into Cuthbert like a bullet, like a second oh, skin, like a carapace. So good. Mm -hmm. um, they would like to whisper to Cuthbert to hold um, his breath weapon for if he sees those dark, that dark winged thing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Cuthbert kind of, your, your instruction comes out and Cuthbert kind of... Oh. Um, 17. 17, okay, so here with a 17, here's what you guys see. I'm going to move you over to a map. Oh, shit. Map. I'm the map, I'm the... Oh. Okay, so you guys should be on this this map as you kind of kind of now diving down the side of the mountain. Um... You are coming now under the under the fog. You are you find yourselves in a dried kind of riverbed. It's a very mm. narrow, meandering riverbed. You see the ironwood trees, several of them kind of toppled over in this kind of lower lands area. Um, you make out immediately one halfling figure who appears to be pinned under a tree over here. Um, just on the other on the far side of the bank. And then Cress with your passive percep. Per 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 with your per eyesight, you are aware <laughs> My of um, another <laughs> individual, a, a wood elven individual in the river itself, on the kind of wading through the mud. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like they had kind of like perhaps like fallen down as they're kind of slick and covered in mud. Um, and you can see that this individual is heavily injured. It looks like they're bloodied. So the halfling is restrained under the tree. The wood elf is muddy and bloody in the riverbed, and you see also one of the peritons. You see the wings like a hawk, like a bird of prey, kind of flared out as it's kind of like making a circle, and you can see it's kind of locked in on the elf uh, crest with your nature awareness. You are aware that this, it looks like the elf is, seems to be its target, as it is kind of looking to come around for a strike, as it's just kind of lining up. Uh, you see it's got these kind of deer-like antlers, sharp and tipped at the edges. Uh, let me actually just blow it up for you. Let me just the image real quick. I can do that. So you can see the wonderful art that Wizards of the Coast gave us. Um, it's got a face. It with, it's got a face looking. like a deer with fangs in its, with long fangs in its mouth and sharp claws at the bottom oh. as it's making its way around. And my friends, we need to go into our first initiative. And mm. you guys... 
if I could have you just place your tokens kind of in this bottom corner above this uh, yellow tree right thank over here. Thank you. Oop, I dropped Cuthbert into the darkness. One sec. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My boy. Cuthbert's He's in gone. out of the dark. My boy. He's... I'm going to just shrink Oh, I'm so big. Guys. Yeah. I'm going to shrink oh, you a little bit. Uh, Finn's already got his giant mode activated. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've already got giant smite going and good. And I, I'm smaller than. Yeah, sorry, I just missed that. Oh, you're good. Thank. You. Um, they will point out to Finn. We've got one restrained and one injured. Um. Okay, I can try. Uh, with them pointing it out, am I able to see the halfling stuck under the tree? Yes. Yeah, and that is the that individual is also like making a big stink as they're kind of calling out. Coco! Coco! Coco, my leg! <sighs> okay. Um, Kind of like struggling to kind of push this thing off, but the, just the, the size of the tree compared to them, their small stature is just too much. And, and, and initiative? <laughs> oh, fuck. And, and, and. Oh, now I roll. Fuck me! Oh, no. Okay, it's better. One of those was a one. I don't oh know what, God. who cursed um, me. I need to sage my dice. I'm going to also have you roll. You have this problem as well, last please. Week. Chris. Hmm. Uh, for yep. Sorry, yeah. I got 18. Yeah. Ooh. What Cuthbert get? 19. Oh, I don't think. One second. I have to look. Get it, bitch. Yeah, just 19. You got, got no decks. You got no, you got no decks to keep him. <laughs> I got no decks on me. <laughs> um, so please with that. And Chris, what'd you get? 10. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. Um, Finn will just sort of, I can try and help the halfling lift the tree up, give him the space It is going lead. for the injured. Shit. Um, me, 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 da, da. Okay, so, uh, we are going to go into combat. Now, I'm going to pitch it to you guys. Normally, I do allow, like, a one-minute meta, where you guys can kind of, like, talk and strategize, mm -hmm. right? Um, it is the two of you. I, it's up to you if you guys would like to take that. I'm let's game. test it and see how it works. Sure. Yeah. Let's see how it, let's yeah. how it feels. Okay, so in that case, uh, we're going to have one minute meta. Currently, also I do allow initiative swaps. I will allow you guys to swap between, you know, Finn, Cress, and Cuthbert. Um, currently, mm. we have Cuthbert with a 19, Finn with an 18, and Cress with a 10. You guys like to make any swaps. You get one swap. Would you want the 18? Cuthbert going first makes sense for sure because he's got the movement. Um, I feel like you going after Cuthbert makes more sense. If Ta you're okay with it. Take the 18. Okay. okay. Thank so. you. Big swap de duty. I am, I am Big Boy Bonk. I don't have much else to do other than Big Boy Bonk. So okay. you work um, in your tandem with Cuthbert. Your minute, makes more take sense. your minute and strat it out real okay. quick. I'm just going to plug so, in my order here. Yeah. Wait a minute. Any thoughts? So, we can go to the stuck halfling first. We just have to be aware that it is gunning for uh, the river. E yeah. No, let's let's secure the elf first. Make sure that since David already said that it, it looks bloodied. So let's ensure that that individual is safe. The halfling is in a position where we can come back and and release them. You know, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Right. Elfin individual first. Okay, well, we are going to go into our first round of combat then. Cuthbert is going to start us off with Cress on deck. Woo! Okay. Cuthbert flies. Uh, you should have control of the token, I believe. Right? Yes, I'm deciding where Cuthbert Yeah, they were is. zooming it around. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's um, right. <laughs> Cuthbert dashes here. Okay. Um, and then... Because it's a dash, obviously can't hold that action. So, oops. But uh, that's fine. It's that's okay. He doesn't. He doesn't lose the the breath weapon or anything like that. So it's fine. Thank you. Um, Cress is going to rinse and repeat. Got something good? Use it. Um, they're going to extend their hand out toward this um, Periton. 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 Um, so Periton. Sorry. And they're going to say, find a different target, and they cast Moonbeam on it. Ooh. I need a con save 15. Okay. Con save 15 for the bird. That's a nine on the dice, and it's probably going to fail. That's Bitch. a fail. Yay! All right. <laughs> so, 
Ten on the roll. Radiant. Give me one second. Oh! Um, you're gonna take twelve radiant damage. Oy, 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 oy. That's a hit. And then twelve roll. radiant damage. Can you can you can you paint us this picture of how you just kind of blast this it's bird? Now that we're in this twilight space, um, Press is still summoning, um, not from the sky itself, but rather about 60 feet above the periton. This sphere opens up, and beyond the sphere, um, anyone looking can see this starscape, and then this flash of, like, an elemental fire, and then Ooh. this flash of water, and then this flash of green, and... It just keeps flashing all of these different dreamscapes as they pull from the dreamscape. You suddenly see a crescent moon and they reach out toward it and then direct downward and this beam of moonlight hits it in the face. Bitch. Can I add a quick little bit of thing flavor for you too? Absolutely. How do you feel about like a dragonfly kind of like zipping down and kind of leading the beam? Like a corporeal, incorporeal dragonfly just kind of, kind of goes by. Absolutely. I think it takes them by surprise as they see it. Yeah. And he just kind of, as it hits, the, the disappears. But you can see kind of like almost guided the beam down with you as you kind of opened it up and it charges into it, um, kind of striking the creature first as the as the creature just kind of squawks in, in terrible pain. I can't squawk like a bird. I'm sorry. That's um, fine. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to bonus action. Sorry. Really fast. Hey, and... Oh, yeah reach my arm out to the elf in up in the river um okay. let's see. you hold on we're coming um and they're going to send another bomb of the summer court this teal light that sparks into these moats that kind of dive into wounds and then re-knit them they'll heal for four points and then one temp nice four points and one temp all right back above bloodied I have movement. How? So it was 70 feet to get there, which means that Cuthbert would have had another 10 to go downward. So how yes. How high above the river are we? Yes. So I've got here kind of in the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see the stuff in the bottom left. River is yep. like 20 feet down. Then there's kind of the center upper ledge where the... Oh. Yeah. So these kind of up, these darker areas are kind of your upper ledges. Those are like 20 feet up. So this guy is just uh, at zero, let's say. Um, these trees are uh, up 20, and then you guys, or at least this guy, is down 20. And we'd be down 10. So you'd be down 10. Okay. Um, so you guys are like 10 feet above him then. Yes. Um, okay, they are going to stay put, but we never took... Uh, that's, that would be an action of some sort. Well, there is a rope attached to the pommel of the saddle. Yeah, you still have it kind I, of just, just looped. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't currently have action economy. So it's there, and I'll throw it next time. Okay. Oops. Yeah, as the moon kind of gets, gets uh, pushed out. Um, you still have, you used your bonus action for bomb some power. Okay, did. so I'll say we'll just, yeah, we end we end with Crest kind of like getting the loops off of the, the pommel that was where it was kind of resting, kind of prepping the rope um, to go. Uh, so that is Cuthbert, that is Cress. Um, then it is Zaperiton's turn with Mean Burb. With Rangers on deck and Finn bringing us up in the in the order. I'm the okay. butt. You're the butt. It's because I was you, the butt. You got butt. But now butt. I'm the butt. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So this creature. This creature is a single-minded, like, vicious hunter. Um, yeah. You can see as it's kind of been <laughs> struck by that, It um, in its eyes, there's just this kind of, like, dark glint crest. Like, you've seen different animals and stuff before, and as you're looking at this thing, you can tell this is not like a beast. This thing is more monstrous. This thing will fight to the death, is the, is the impression you're getting from it. Um, and its single focus is its prey. Mm hmm. Can I, it, not yeah. as like an actual action or anything, mm -hmm. just for flavor, they mm -hmm. they make a clear territorial show and like mm. growl over um, this entity just to make clear that they're not leaving. Yeah, just yeah. Just to let it know. Tell you what, tell you what. 
because Cuthbert took his action to dash, right? And we're going to give this as kind of like, we'll say this is, we'll give this an action economy. I want this to kind of be like a Cuthbert intimidate, but with you adding on to it to give an advantage as the two of you are both kind of like posturing up against this thing. Wait. As Cuthbert kind of senses you kind of taking that, um, you can see the corner of the eye glances over to you as you kind of uh, sees you take the posture, glances back forward towards the periton and also assumes similar posture, similar kind of front. Go I ahead, love roll, that. Roll those intimidates. Oh god, and that one's gone. Um, it's not great. It's a ten. It's a ten. Okay. Well, let's see. Then it's going. You, you guys are you. You made the attempt, right? But this thing appears, especially after the moonbeam, it just appears kind of angry and enraged, and it is going to. It's going to fly towards you, right? As it's making its way towards you, you can see in this kind of like skull-like face, right? These sharp fangs as it kind of <laughs> squawks out, shuts the beak very tightly, really quickly, uh, tucks the wings in and dives underneath you. And it is going for, it's going for the elf. It is going for the elf. Um, okay, is it making an attack roll? It is going to make an attack roll. I yep. cloud rune. Oh shit! Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so let it, me. I'm just grabbing the. I'm operating D and D Beyond on my phone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, cloud rune. While wearing or carrying an object inscribed with this rune, let's, um, it's and it's within thirty feet. It is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna expend my reaction to um, have it hit me. Okay. Okay. All right. And does this do, so I will say this creature has multi-attacks. Does Carly do both attacks or just the, uh, the once one? per short rest when a creature you can see within 30 view is hit by an attack roll. This would have definitely hit. So, um, okay. this first attack is going to be towards you then. Yeah. As it, as it's kind of diving in, it kind of twists in the air, um, as it takes its dive attack and kind of yeah. sweeps just under cover. You'll it see goes as like the yeah. mist within this sort of cavernous space begins to swirl and almost create an imitation of the shield uh, that is on Finn's back and pushes the creature upward as Cress, you're able to see the shield sort of uh, forming in a runic pattern uh, on uh, Finn's shoulder as he sort of is creating the target. Uh, he's creating himself as a target. Magnificent. Right. What does that do? And then they see it turn toward him. <laughs> uh. Yes. Yeah, so I can take it. See the <laughs> You see the clouds appear, right? And right where that rune is on Finn's shoulder, there is a sudden kind of gore as uh, you take five piercing damage <clears throat> as the creature attempts to gore uh, the elf. Um, it's going to use its second attack, though, to... Oh, sorry, hang on. I am uh, dumb. I, it actually has another thing. So there's five piercing damage there. Um, but because this is a flyby, it also does get to add its dive attack allows it to add an extra some extra damage get me um this is uh so plus five plus eight so your total is 18 damage so five so forget the five just 18 total is what you got hit by okay cool all right um yeah so it, it strikes and then it's gonna take its second attack to as the as the, the beat kind of tries to penetrate and it finds purchase but not on the target it initially thought it's going to kind of flare back and strike out with its talons at the elf and it is going to miss hmm. as the as within the mist the elf kind of also backing up and ducks down as the claw is just kind of whoosh, over the head and the creature is going to take off with the next rest of its movement and go into do, 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 do. Let's see so i need 30 feet from you i'm going to put him right over i'm going to go 30 feet this way bottom of that red tree there. Three. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So creature is moved over to there as it kind of dipped underneath you, tried to attack, got Finn, missed the elf, and continues its motion um, as it kind of makes its point over there. And then let's just see here that you guys hear a second squawk. out of that orange tree, that yellow tree, a second creature appears. 
going to it's actually mm-hmm. going to yeah I think it's going to go for Cress oh by all means I think it's going to go for Cress. All right, so it's going to... The... Oh, David, I'm an idiot. When the Harrington started its turn in my moonbeam, it had to make mm. another con save. I'm sorry. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, con save. Sorry, I was like, oh, what's the damage? I'm waiting for the damage. Where I got to... I don't know I gotta yet. Fail. I got to fail my con save real quick. <laughs> that, I, that, that's a failure. That's a two on the dice. Okay, well, I rolled bad, so it's just another six radiant. Okay. Creature is bloodied, though. Mm. Okay, cool. Sorry, yeah. I was no, like, okay. how do my spells work? Up? <laughs> don't, don't we'll apologize at all. That's that's good. All right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're still technically in this order. Um, so yeah, it is bloodied as it makes its way, as it starts. Um, they're burnt by the moonbeam. So yeah, it's going to go for Cress here. All right, Cress, first attack coming at you. It's going to miss for sure. I'm pretty sure uh, that was a four on the dice. There's no way that hits you. That second one, though, is a natural 20. Uh, Silvery barbs. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. If anything is consistent with Button through any game they play, yeah. Silvery barbs. <laughs> so it's it's not a crit, but it did roll an 18 on the dice. So okay. I'm pretty all right, that's sure. Fine. It's hey, not a crit. As long as it's not a fucking it's, crit. It's not, a, it's not a fucking crit, though. So let's see. You, Cress, are going to cheat. It's the fear and no. excitement as Button says, Silvery barbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cress. Yes. You're going to take 10 piercing damage as um, the strike with the beak misses, right? But the claws come back, the talons come back on the underside as it kind of like twists and kind of scratches you along just the <gasps> outside of your rib cage. Just <laughs> um, Fuck you so too. That, that's your piercing damage, and it gets to be 20 feet ahead of you. Right at the edge of that bush. Right there. Okay. Where's your moonbeam? Your moonbeam was a, like very up close here, right? to there. Very. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Well, I declared it, so. <laughs> Oopies. Uh, oopsies. All right. Uh, it is going to be the ranger's turns. Uh, let's see. Fuck it up, boys. So the the we'll start with the halfling. The halfling is pinned underneath that thing. Halfling is gonna try to get that thing off of him. Um, there, go go. Who are you guys? Help! I, I can't can't get it off. Um, unfortunately, still pinned. As we'll get the you. other the other ranger is going to go ahead and take an attack roll. Draws a longbow. Um, it's a longbow. Draws a longbow and what do I tries have? to. Yeah. What was that sound? Am like? I David? <laughs> and <laughs> who is David? Who is David? Who am I? God, I love that fucking cup. It's so fucking cute. Okay, so this the arrow does actually like shoot out from underneath you guys as it makes its way towards the periton, and you see it kind of hit the chest. It is a square hit. Right, right in the center as the elf <gasps> Die, you bastard! Pulls the bling! You hear the, the bowstring snap as the arrow flies, whistles through the air, hits the chest, but just bounces off. Um, immediately, the two of you can tell that it seems to be resistant to that damage. Mm. Mm-hmm. You see the arrow not take purchase, not fine. It strikes true, but does not embed itself or lodge into the chest of the creature. Right... Okay, then that brings us from the rangers. Uh, ranger boy, ranger boy up in Ranger boy. <laughs> ranger boy. Ranger boy is gonna go take a movement to kind of tuck in a little bit under here, and kind of hide in, kind of just crouch down in there. Um, but we'll, you know, prepping the next attack, looking at the two of you, um, and says, uh. Uh, your assistance is much appreciated. They seem to be tar- they seem to be targeting me. Yeah, I think they like hurt. Uh, so you stay down there. Yeah, kind of just kind of crouching down in there. All right, and that is the Rangers and Finn. You are up, David. I have a bit of a plan. 
I love to hear this. Really? I love this way this sentence is starting. During my session zero, I was able to leap. Uh, am, am I able to do that to get to where this second uh, periton is? I would say this is going to be possible to leap off of Cuthbert and clear that gap and, and move over there. I'm going to say it's possible, but Cuthbert's gonna, Cuthbert is the thing you're leaping off of, mm -hmm. right? So I want an athletics from you, and then Button, I'm going to have you roll mm. an athletics for Cuthbert to see that Cuthbert can kind of provide the resistance needed for Finn to push off. Can There's n nothing scarier than trying to pick the dice I'm so sorry. for someone else's roll. To, can I can I appeal <laughs> to your DM kindness, me. David? Mm -hmm. If I can I roll first, and if my roll is adequate, can this give Crescent Cuthbert advantage? I think this is the first time you're pulling off. Fine. This the first time you're pulling off the maneuver. Oh. Subsequent. This goes really well, though. This goes really well. The next time. It's a twenty-five. An excellent roll, Cuthbert. It's got decent strength. He's got. Very decent strength. Eh. That's all right. That's all right. That's average. That's average. Um, and Finn, your movement speed is pretty freaking hefty too. Uh, sorry, your your jump distance yes. with your with your strength modifier. So yeah, I, I, you guys can clear that, right? As, I, Cuthbert, as long as Cuthbert didn't fail that roll, he basically just needed to be a base for the jump. Okay. Right. So yeah. I fucking you clear the distance. Cuthbert, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, Cress, you feel kind of like even with Cuthbert as the wings kind of there was just a kind of like a misbeat on the wing just ever so slightly, right? Instead of kind of catching it on the downstroke, right? Finn jumps and Cuthbert just, it's just kind of like mid-stroke. Um, oh my. Sorry. But yes, you feel Cuthbert kind of kind of dip underneath you as the wings kind of work to catch back up. Um, no loss of height or anything though. Uh, yeah. David, I would like you to make me big as I use my bonus action for Giant's you... Might. You got it. Uh, I need to be just a bit. Um, I womp. As as Finn clears Cuthbert, what do we see? Um, so as soon as he makes sure that like Cress and Cuthbert are cleared uh, from any sort of uh, danger, you would see as the rune, the runic symbols on Finn begin to glow, and just sort of he's encased in this purple light as this visage of an owl sort of extends the form and he lands in this giant form. Um, and then he's going to make an attack and no action fire rune on this periton. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make the attack. Um, giant fight, blah, 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 blah. Oof. Okay. As a, as a non-natural 20. It's, and then, since I invoked the fire rune, is going to take an extra two d six. So basically, I'm going to expend the one time use of the extra d six uh, damage for giant's might. So it'll take an additional three d six, two being fire damage and two just being straight slashing damage. Okay, and this is with your long sword. This is with my long sword. Um, so that's a, a d eight as well. And then I'll need a. So I'll roll damage first. Yeah, give me the long sword damage. <laughs> One-handed longsword, so 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12 slashing okay. damage. Half uh, to 6. Is the resistance. Half to 6. With the additional um, four, 2, so 2 more base. Um, and then the fire damage is... Oof. Um, 6, 7, 8. 10 fire damage. Okay, and that's a full damage. And then I need a DC 13 strength saving throw to see if it is restrained. What about a natural one? It is um, restrained for a minute. Okay. That's baller. Hell yeah. So he just kind of locks this thing down in place. He'll look back at Cress. I'll meet you on the other side when this one's done. It is very bloodied. Like, even though the blade resists between the fire and all the other damage kind of coming in, yeah, this creature is it's bloodied as you kind of like... Uh, come in and you can see the feathers are singed across uh, the wings and the chest where the blade the the chains are kind of like strapped in it, strapping it in Okay, very bloody bloody symbol on it. 
Okay, okay. Uh, uh, that's my turn. Anything else? Nope. Fantastic. All right. Oh, well, my friends, that brings us to the top of the order. You get another minute to decide where you would like to do this turn. This is part of Meta Minute. Does this trajectory clip fin? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Yes, it does pass through that top left square. Go for it. No. Go for All right, it. So I'll get my moonbeam there in two rounds. Um, cool. Um, so I will be going over to that individual this round then. The the damage for it is like halved if it succeeds, right? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say if it was like a, a, a void damage situation, then I'd say you guys can like call I out could, and we can. Um, I could yeah. clown root it, cloud rune it and put it on the other parry team. Okay. That's so great. I'd shit. say okay. do it. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. Oh, dude. Um, <laughs> so it gets the damage from you plus the damage it would have taken normally. Correct. That's nasty. That's what I'm saying. That's, I got my oh reaction. My That's God. why I'm saying do it because I can cloud rune and just fucking do it. Yeah. Okay. I, Go for it. Yeah. That's that's right. Okay. 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 But yeah. Lock him down. Lock him down. All right. So. Uh, that's it for Meta Minute then. We got Cuthbert starting us off at the top of the round. Cress on deck. Okay, down. Cuthbert flies here. That means I'm there too, sorry. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Cress floats in the air, t And I float in the air. Um, so all those cartoons, then, Cuthbert moves first, then Cress. Cuthbert is going to exhale. Um, and I need a deck save from this motherfucker. Uh, it's a good roll. Uh, let's see. That is an 18. Save. All right, it'll take half. Um, Bitch. It will take half as this sudden spurt of blue lightning uh, scorches toward it. And I rolled 13 on the dice, so I'm always bad at halving odd numbers. Uh, That's six so that would be seven. Six. 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 The six lightning damage. Um, and then, David, I'm not seeing on here is the breath weapon an alternative to the multi-attack or an addition that you re-roll for uh time? it's an alternative to the multi-attack an alternative. so okay. that's that's his that's his action that's his action uh and then i'm going to do what we talked about i can't move the circle but the moonbeam i'm gonna yeet onto um this borb and as they pass by as it passes by finn this circle of like open to the dreamscape um, passes just over your head. They go, I'm really sorry. And they keep moving it. Don't worry about it. Um, David, can I just choose to fail this? <laughs> yeah. And cloud ruin it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can absolutely. So Cress will see as this, this moonbeam begins to move, the mist begins to float upward as two uh, mist, uh, mist lined wings looking like owl wings take the remaining damage and just <laughs> bat it forward toward the Parrington as I cloud burn. Oh, yeah. And it was on uh, this one, right? And it was on the one directly in front of me that's looking quite bad. Oh, directly in front of you. Oh, yeah. Er okay, okay, um, okay. Would it make do you want to roll the 2d10? Mm, I, I can. Do you want to? Do it. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, 2d10. Yeah, I figured I'll just take care of the one that is in front of me. 13. 13. Right. And I have to roll a save. Yeah. No, well, you failed the save. I failed the save. And you're, and you're redirecting it to the Correct. thing, so I don't think it gets a save. It doesn't yeah. get a save. It just it takes the damage. This is it a fucking hell of a damage. combo. That's, that's brutal. No, I love that shit. Fantastic. My friend, how do you want to do this? Um, I imagine that the wings separate from Finn's back and Cress will see as it turns into this dragonfly that just enraptures the creature and just poof, blasts outward into these fractals of light sort of that melt into this rain-like structure. Oh, oh shit. It was your thing. I just channeled it. I All see. Right. Amazing. And now I need that's, to save from this guy. That's from that guy. This and is a one-two uh, punch. Three on the roll. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that is 15 radiant. Oh, press. Yeah. How would you like to do this? <laughs> Jesus, guys, that was sick. Ah! Um, 
they swoop over this restrained dwarf. They say, we heard you. I'm, I'm sorry it took so long. And they um, watch the dragonfly wings incinerate this first burb. They go, well, I can do that. And then the same thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead trying to steal my thunder. <laughs> they, they're both just disintegrated in feathers and, and, and light. <laughs> And with that, the battlefield clears. The the peritons are are no more. Nothing left. Neither a hide nor feather of them. As the two of you stand triumphant over the battle, or at least Finn stands triumphant, and and Cuthbert <sighs> flares the wings <sighs> as almost like a victory stance. Um. The the rangers are just like coming out. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, of and, course. Uh, Finn will reach down and try and help the elf get up to his level. Uh, oh, yeah. Still large, so he's just going to yeah. kind of scale what he can and help this individual up. Easy peasy, yeah. The two oh. of you uh, get up to, to your level there. Um, and with that, he'll, press, he'll, he'll shrink down. Sorry. No, you're fine. I'll put you back down. All right. Well, guys, with the end of this combat, I think this is a great place for us to take a break for now. Yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. And yeah. we'll see you guys back in like five, ten minutes. See you shortly. Bye-bye. See you soon.
they can see and hear you. I fucking hate your guts. I despise you as a human being. Uh, for chat, Bun and I are fighting. We'll see if it carries over to known realm Solege. Probably. <laughs> fucking asshole. We'll just do it. We'll just do a one-on-one Crest versus Finn. They'd win. Right now. <laughs> I'm. I don't know. I'm half of my hit points. Oh, that's true. And, and half that's of, true. I you, and you have good magics. I do have well, good magics. You good do magics. too, though. Uh, that's all gone. <laughs> I got nothing yeah. else to do. Yeah, yeah. That was your that was your cloud runes for today, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I get. The, I do get those back in a short rest, though. Anyway. Yeah, so, we're gonna resume uh, here in the Iron Hills, in this dried riverbed. Uh, are we live? Yeah. Oh, hi, chat. <laughs> hi, everybody again. <laughs> I did say that. I was yelling at Buddy no, because he said... Just went right over my head. Oh, I just gonna... Buddy, I'm so sorry. I will be <laughs> more good. communicative. No, 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 no. You're good. That was, that was me. That was me. Um, okay, so you, we are picking up again, you guys, uh, in this drying riverbed. You can see there's still pockets of some of it, like not totally gone in these deeper valleys. Um, but you have before you the two Ironborn Rangers, right? Um... Don't worry about the map from here on out. Um, you know, so we'll just kind of go back to theater of mind. Um, but it's the two of you and these two Ironborn, Ironborn Rangers, um, the Peritons that you guys vanquished, have disintegrated into sparkles of light courtesy of the Moonbeam of Cress. Um, the Halfling has a right leg kind of pinned under uh, the the large tree, kind of working at it like, yeah. man. Right. Yep, so... See if we can get you out of there. All right. Um, the uh, how do you guys get him out of the run <laughs> tree? There's Excuse a new puppy, me. by the way. Puppy, chat. puppy is here. Borka, Borka. The puppy is live. Um, they are going to utilize their stronger partner here, Cuthbert. Um, all right, buddy. What do you think? Um, and they will essentially if I may help Cuthbert as he Ooh. lifts this log, um, because I am very weak and Cuthbert is not. Absolutely. Okay. Come on, Cuthbert. So roll for the Cuthbert with the advantage. And can you tell us like how you're assisting Cuthbert? I'd like to kind of get Absolutely. a little bit of an idea. It's not Cress's most elegant moment. They literally <laughs> like get like, as underneath the log as they can, like a dad trying to move something too heavy. <laughs> and they will like winch themselves underneath it and just start unfolding as Cuthbert essentially like gets it into his maw and moves it pretty much on his own. Cress okay. is just there. Yep. All right. <laughs> Cress, what Cuth- what Cuth- Cuthbert get for that roll? 17. 17, yeah. Cress um, is the Cuthbert- tire jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the jack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had the shoulder like... Ugh. Uh, Cuthbert, yeah, grips it in the jaws, kind of leans it up. It begins kind of rolling the 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 tree, and sure enough, the el- the halfling is able to kind of almost just a little bit gets the leg out. Uh, <laughs> kind of reaches back, pulls the shoe out that slipped off, and puts the boot back on, like, and rolls away as as Cuthbert lets the tree go, and it comes down with it like a big heavy like weight. Just... Crest tumbles. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, I heard Coco, they'll point at the elf. I imagine that's their name. And then, who are you? I'm Cress. Oh, oh, nice to meet you. Thanks for saving us. Um, my name's Ridak. Ridak Lighttop. Ridak. You see, uh, small, well, small halfling, uh, a halfling, <laughs> kind of like messy, uh, blonde hair, kind of in layers. Um, freckled face, uh, bright green eyes, um, as setting, you know, kind of dusting off the uh, ranger attire, setting a crossbow back into its holster, um, putting the bolts. There was a crossbow kind of laying on the floor that Redak was thinking about trying to reach to, but couldn't quite get there as uh, being pinned. Um, and looks to you and goes, uh, thank you so much for saving us. Those creatures, they're peritons. As highly aggressive um you handled them quite exceptionally chris handled them i redirected 
That is looks, not true. They're yelling the, across this opening. Yeah. <laughs> the chasm, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, we'll say you guys get back together. You know, okay. kind of group to get the whole five of you, Cuthbert included, back together. Um, uh, Finn will just sort of, um, what's your, what's your, what are your your ranks within the Rangers? Uh, just the the two of them, both Ironborn. But our leader, um, our, our captain, uh, one of the Iron Wardens, uh, Astif. Have you? You said uh, we were separated. Um, I'm going to try to find him. We found him already. Uh, Finn pulls the axe from his belt. You hold it out, and Coco kind of takes it. Palms. Where is, where is he? Where is he? Press. Um, wrapped him up. We know where he is. Well, he's on. They he's just on Cuthbert. Cuthbert. He's on. Yeah. So we can. Two of them, uh, uh, Ridak and, and Coco, just kind of press the hand on the shoulders. Let's get back into that oh, You cut out a bit, David. Oh, sorry, I'm mumbling. Um, we've got <laughs> to get back and let Lindsay know. Was it, was it just the Peritons that attacked? Did something else attack the Watchtower? Just the Peritons. We were resting about to finish our journey home uh be back at the ironwood around now um but while astiff was on lookout um uh, just missed him he swooped in one of them grabbed him at the shoulders and began hauling him off he must have dropped his weapon um the other chased coco into this ravine and i and uh, i followed um, but then the soil must have given loose and a tree fell on me in you know, a rush of things. Sorry for your loss. Rush of things. Sorry. Thank you for recovering, and it means a lot. Um, you want us to bury him here? Would you rather take him? Oh, button you cut out a bit as well. Sorry. Or would you rather take him? The two of them look at each other and go, it belongs to the Iron Hills now. Ranger should. Um, the the kind of Coco mentioning. Um, why don't we take him to the Sanctum? He was one of their members. Is there? Coco goes. Don't know if we can make the journey just the two of us and carrying him alone. Looks to you all. You've done so much for us already. But would you be willing to help us ferry Astif to the Sanctum Metallic? funeral rites will be buried. David, is the Sanctum Metallica in the Ironwood? It is in the Iron Hills, so it is in the region that you are in. Okay. I was yeah, I was just gonna ask if it, if this is like yeah. far off our beaten path. Not not totally far off the path. Um r- let's see. Caress, uh quick survival check. I can't read. Um <laughs> sixteen plus seven. Oh, I can't very do good. math. Oh, okay. In that case, three. Twenty-three. In that case, I'm gonna just kind of slide you guys over to this regional map real quick. It's so cool. Okay. Um, just get a little feel going. Eh. I missed. Eh. I missed again. Eh. Where's the click? God damn it! Hang on, sorry. <laughs> Where's oh, the wait, there, is there it is. There it is. Revealing uh, is always so much harder than it needs to be in real Oh my god. Especially with like the polygon thing. Let me see if I can. Oh. I just did a really big momentary dumb. <laughs> okay. So, um, you guys left the Ironwood, which is kind of on this kind of plateau over here. You've head into the foothills now. Um,. With your survival check, Cress, um, and you know, being a navigator, Borazar's Peak is the main mountain in this range. That is that large one right here. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the Sanctum Metallica, as you are discussing now with the Ironborn Rangers, they reveal that the Sanctum Metallica is over on... So these three mountains are known as uh, the Griffins. The Borazar's Peak, the main one here, and then the wings of the Griffin are these two mountains. They're kind of at the side. The Sanctum Metallica is on this eastern mountain, and you guys are somewhere kind of like down in the in the valley behind this uh, these mountains clipped badly. I just realized, damn it. Okay, so it's it's map. it's north where we're heading. Basically. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's north this way. Yes. And then we're heading to Damaril, which is that way. No, so Damaril is north, direct above. So Damaril is. Oh, I thought Damaril was on the water, which I thought that's what this was. Uh, that is what was uh the Bree and Terra Bay, um. So kind of like a, a lagoon almost, um, but Damaril was at the mouth of the lagoon, uh. So, the mouth the kind of being north. So yeah, Damaril is directly kind of this this heading. Okay. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood. No, um, you're good. I think we oh. can do that. Makes sense. We've done quite a lot already. I feel, I, I, I feel really bad asking you guys to, to put yourselves out even more. You've all put yourselves out as Ironwood Rangers. The least we can do is repay back that kindness. We're headed north... Anyway, so Sanctum Metallica would be at least a nice place for you know everyone to rest. And two of you can rest up as well. The monks there will be able to help you on your journey. I'm sure. Where are you guys headed? Uh, to Tamaril. Not made it that far up since the last wave, but we've. It seems like no one has. <laughs> It's we've we've stayed very close to to the Ironwood with everything. The creatures have certainly grown more more aggressive of late, territorial. Uh, these peritons even it's strange that they would attack a company of rangers. They know a lot smarter than that. Not that obviously they can't, but easier prey is they're usually more opportunistic. Yeah. That's concerning. Um, so, why perhaps we should find a place to rest for tonight, and then we can continue the journey in the morning. Or how are you all? What time is it um, on so, Tim's watch? Because it was on about Tim's watch, yeah, five when we. It was so about five off, when correct. you started, so oh, we'll yeah. say it's about six now. Between, like, getting to the watchtower, making your way, you know, investigating there, and then kind of finding these guys and everything. True. How far is it to the Sanctum? Uh, we should be able to reach there in about half a day. Maybe, a, you know, maybe a bit more, depending. Um, but the, the, as long as the trails are all right, we should be able to find our way there without any issue. All right, how about we start making our way there? Find a place to make camp in a few hours. Makes sense. That that makes sense to me as well. That to us um, looks at Cuthbert and goes, "I've never seen a dragon before." I should mention this is this is the halfling Riddack. He's definitely the more talkative of the two. They um, kind of nod upward. This is Cuthbert, and he's the best dragon. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's on our side. It's certainly <laughs> it, the two of you hadn't come along. Three of you, excuse me, Mr. Cuthbert. If the three of you had not come along when you did, I don't see that we would have gotten it out of that one. I'm sure you would have. You're tough. Um... Is Riddick's leg injured? Yeah, and so Riddick is not at like full health. Neither neither of them are. Um, that being said, though, um, uh, Coco is better than when you had initially found them. Okay. So my thought is they'll gesture up to the um, sidecars that were built for Pim and Granny. Mm -hmm. We can 
walk this journey, but you two, I think, might want to take it a little easy. Cuthbert, if you're okay with walking with these individuals, I think that might be wise. Dips the head down, Cuthbert does, and kind of nudges into you, um, acquiescing, acquiescing to your request. Um, okay, so we've got the the four humanoids and Cuthbert as you guys kind of begin your journey, uh, making your way through the Iron Hills, through the foothills towards that uh, eastern wing of the Griffin. Um, let's get survival checks. Are you keeping an eye out for kind of campsites kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Survival. 20. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry. Okay. Uh, skill survival is a uh, 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, that's good. The Zering Jars. They did well, too. All right. Yeah, your group is actually able to move unhindered through the through the dense brush, um, making your way out from the bottom of the canyon up to kind of the slopes and kind of work, waking your way, walking along a ridge line. Um, Cuthbert does occasionally just kind of kick off and kind of glide certain sections where it'll just make be easier rather than kind of trying to narrow, kind of climb along a narrow ledge. Um, but the four of you are able to kind of continue your hike through the Iron Hills, making your way up the slopes. Um, it isn't long though, about maybe an hour or so, hour or two before you find a large plateau cliff, right? Deeply recessed into the side of the hill. Uh, can I get some nature checks? As you guys are looking at this space, you can see... Uh, uh, give Cress advantage. I rolled a natural 20! Oh. Okay. Cress, you can you can tell that this area, actually, as you look at it, there's kind of this... There's several trees along this large kind of flat cliff um, and a deep recessed section. Up along the cliff, you can see where water would have kind of like stained along the sides of the wall and kind of eroded sections. You can see this is actually a cliffside waterfall at one point that is now dried up. Um, and even as you enter into this area, you can, it, the air is even more damp as you approach the, the remnants of this little pond itself, where in the deeper sections is actually still some water. Um, but this strikes you all as an excellent place to take a rest, given its flat nature, it's defensible seemingly from all sides, um, and it looks out over a vast section of the Ironwood, uh, of the Iron Hills, the forest and the surrounding area. Bill Nudge, uh, Riddick, you know, you could make a new watchtower here. Yeah, you're right, this isn't a bad area. This, this is certainly a good vantage. Kind of leans over the side. Quiet, too. Not a bad idea. Uh, Coco, what do you think? Shall we maybe prep something? Then uh, Coco goes, um, uh, it'd be difficult. Astiff had the axe. Crafting those watchtowers without one. It's difficult to work the ironwood. They, uh, they don't chop easily. Well, the axe is yours. Oh, that's right. That's right, you did give it to him. Can't say that it feels right and don't feel like I've earned this. Well, uh, let's keep it in mind, and when you get to the Sanctum Metallica, maybe speak with their monks. Yes. We'll certainly have to consider coming back this week. It'd probably make a good full encampment here. It'd be nice to have a lookout station. So as we kind of go into evening, um, setting up here for your for camp i believe you guys have a two-person tent that was packed with you yes. in your yep. in your equipment uh the rangers um also have their own stuff they they have their own equipment um so you have two tents um set up um do you guys want to light a fire or anything like that mm, no i i don't think that's wise I think um, what Chris will do in lieu of that is um, Druid craft. Just they'll take like 
two minutes and just druidcraft some of the wild flowers to kind of um, grow up around their encampment and just this little almost like fairy circle. <laughs> um, just kind of giving a little bit of cover from the wind and it's just pleasant. Okay, that's awesome. That is really cool. Okay. Um, All right. No, as, as camp is just kind of being set up and um, I think... Finn will just find Cress at the tail end of their uh, druid crafting. Uh, are you holding up? I'm worried. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to change, and that's that's all right. Um, David, do I have a sense of how far from Damaril we currently are? Roll of survival. Survive! Uh, I rolled a 10 for a 17. Nice. Okay. 17 is excellent. Um, so, with a 17 on your survival check, um, kind of going back to some of the, the maps and stuff that you've kind of been working on and your experience traveling and, you know, checking out this area before, um, you get the sense, you would know that um, if everything goes according to plan, you're probably like, with Cuthbert's speed, you're probably like three days away. Um, probably closer, no, sorry, two days away as Cuthbert's like travel speed, mm. right? Okay. Um, hiking and walking through the hills and everything, you'd probably be looking at closer to about four days of travel. They um, glance at Finn. I mean, I think as long as we get to the Sanctum Metallica tomorrow and we fly from there, it should be fine. I'm just worried. I imagine there are people in need all over and that we're going to be seeing a lot of them on our travel. And you know, I, I pushed prioritizing these folk, and I think it was the right thing. I just worry that, that I'm not the right person for this job, because I cannot. I cannot find it in myself to just ignore people, but I know that I need to be there or June 1st, and yeah, there, there, there's this look of shame. I just don't know what to do. If you're open to hearing me speak openly, I'll share a wisdom you shared with me. We can't save everyone. You can't always be there for everyone. And that is a hard thing to understand and to realize, and I know you know it. We know that Granny Mal is the priority. Getting to Damaril is the priority, and we did a good thing. M moving forward with the thought that we're capable of saving everyone is not only detrimental to us, but it... I've had to remind myself more often than not that it's me underestimating the people of this world, and I don't want to continue to do that. I understand, and I feel very much the same. Fuck, I pushed to stop and, and to check on what was happening here, but I think after we drop these individuals off, we move for Damaril and we move. Your sense of responsibility is deeply honorable and I respect and share it deeply. It's just not fair given the way the world is. For us to be shackled with such responsibility. Mm. 
You say all of this, and I understand that you're right. I just question my ability to follow through the next time I see someone in trouble. I will struggle the same way. Fuck. Sorry. Oh, uh, you really gotta stop apologizing. Well, instead of apologizing, I'll take first watch. All right, you take first. Um, they'll kind of close the distance with Coco and Riddick. If you two want to take the second watch, I can take the third and fourth. Fuck, you're an elf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Togo's like, I can I can take that. I can help with the watch for sure. Thank you. Um As Crest kind of makes their way to the tent, Finn will just sort of close in to them and sort of lean down. Bark. <laughs> he barks. Uh <laughs> looks, looks them dead in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, Puppy's trying to play with somebody. He loved to see. Hell yeah! That. You're stronger than I think you give yourself credit for. I see a lot of resilience in you. In the very short time I've known you, it just felt important to say it outwardly. That's a very generous thing to say. I just think there may be a lot of kinds of strength and I be may I may be missing a very important Kai. But I'm gonna take to heart what you said. We help these people, and then we go. And we do what we need to do. There's this long look as Cress turns their head and just watches Cuthbert. As I imagine, he's settling in. Yeah, pacing just kind of, you know, a little bit a ways away from the tent, kind of deeper into the cavern uh, with a rock shelf over kind of takes a little kind of stomp around, scratches at the ground, <laughs> settles, you know, uses the tail to kind of swish away some stuff and just kind of nuzzles into a very like, almost like tight space. Um, and as you can, as you watch, you're kind of almost surprised of how a creature of such size can look so docile as it kind of cozies up. They'll watch him fondly and they look back at Finn. I know I've told you about some of the things that we can expect at Damaril. If I don't make it out, someone needs to take care of Cuthbert. And they pull from their hip this pommel of a blade, and there's just the, the tiniest sliver of the blade itself, but it is a broken longsword. If I don't make it out, I need you to take this. And, uh, and I would need you to... I don't really know how it works. Maybe Cuthbert has to pick someone else or something, but if... If I go down, can you make sure Cuthbert gets out? He'll offer his hands. He'll take them. You have my word. 
in addition to that word. As I said earlier today, I am at your back. I swear to defend you and to defend Cuthbert and to move forward with the intention of helping us all make it out alive. But you have my word and I don't break that. And missing is very different than still discovering. I'm still looking for it, too. Sort of squeeze their hands. They squeeze back. I imagine you'll find it. That sentiment is shared. Thank you, Finn Reese. You don't know what that promise means to me. Of course. happy to be of service and to help a good person Cressida Estuary likewise sleep well trance well do what you do well I don't sleep. <laughs> I dream, and they get into the tent. That doesn't make any I, sense. <laughs> dude, I love. I actually really like that line. I don't sleep. I dream. <laughs> All right. So, Cress, you head into the tent, flaps close, and you settle down, getting ready for your trance. Puppy. <laughs> that was that, that was even the puppy. That was Jitterbug just knocking over. Oh all no! Oh head. no! He's just trying to get comfy, and it just tipped right over when her paw knocked it. <laughs> um, Cress, you settle in for your your trans as you start to kind of like reach out into the dream world. Then you are setting up to take a watch. Yes, sir. Settling in, looking out over the Iron Hills. Uh, again, there is no day and night cycle. It is still this same steady twilight. That you are in um behind the mountains now it's also again as you make your way further north still it becomes it is darker and deeper right there's just the barest hint of purple on the southwest western uh, southeastern horizon but for the most part it's quite dark um roll a perception check you settle in what is going to do on his watch while he's doing this too um Oh, thank fucking Christ. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, sorry, my, my dumb boy brain just has to get this roll out. Uh, perception is a, an 18. An 18. Um, okay. But if it looks relatively clear, he's going to take a, uh, a a piece of stone that he has picked up over his, his journeys. Because I imagine he has a small collection of, of just like different types of stone and, um, and things like that. So he will find one... Um, that I imagine has this bluish tint to it, this sort of sure. reflect, reflective glass-like structure, hard to work with, but he's yeah, yeah. comfortable. Um, he will then take the the couple hours on watch and uh, start to just etch in um, the runic symbols for strength and dream. Mm. All right, um, and just have those prepared to to give Cress uh, when he is done. Okay, so yeah, you kind of walk through this dried, like pond, right? And as you kind of look around, you can see remnants of where the water would have kind of eroded away the stone and smoothed it out, right? Um, and as you're kind of sifting, as you kind of like just kind of working along, it's not hard actually. A lot of the rocks out here are kind of like a dark mm. slate colored, right? And it's you are able to find one that is still has a very bluish kind of tint to it. Right, very smooth river stone, right? Worked over by, you know, tons and tons of water to press into this kind of yeah. smooth outer surface. Um Okay. Let's have you roll a let's call this a skill check, right? Uh choose your skill that you would like to use to apply to make this carving. I'll do sleight of hand, because I have advantage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense too. Okay. 
19. 19, yeah. You're able to start off, to start working on it. Um, I would say you get through, um, you know, working through most of it. Yeah. Right? And this is like not inscribing uh, magic. This is truly just carving carving just, this stone. Yep, absolutely. Um, can I have you roll a d10 for me, please? Where? What do you look like? There you are. One. One? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um... As you're carving on your, as you're carving the stone, um, you're kind of grating away at it. You know, as you work the chisel and everything, you kind of hear, you know, the the sound of kind of the scraping, like as you're kind of like lightly kind of pressing in first that first outline as you start to make those grooves deeper. Um, and then there's a moment where you pause, right? But you that grind and the grinding sound that you make stops. You realize that there is another grinding sound it's still there take a moment to kind of look around as you glance about you hear this you hear the snapping of branches sharp kind of alert Uh, roll another perception check for us please Seventeen. Seventeen. You kind of start the the sound. The sound has kind of drawn your attention, and you're kind of cautiously walking around the campsite, making your ways around the perimeter. Okay. And you see some of the ironwood trees in the near vicinity shake the leaves, not just like the wind, right? And you hear the snapping again, crack, as one of the branches and the boughs just kind of breaks through and falls to the bottom. Um, this is about, so this is like a few, so like 30, 60, 30 to 50 feet, um, below you at the moment, uh, down below the ledge. Um, and as you kind of continue to observe it, you see a creature emerge through the boughs of the branch, a very kind of insect-like creature. Its carapace is this kind of outer the outer carapace is this hard rust colored shell as it is working its way up the sides of the the tree and is kind of crunching away at several of the leaves and the branches um you've seen something similar to this before mm-hmm. now being in the ironwood region for a while they are a common pest mm-hmm. as you are beha- as you behold a rust monster that is just chewing on the tree um it doesn't make any sort of aggressive action to you or anything. These these beasts are again a common pest in the region, um, and you can Not, see it's just kind of just kind of chipping away at the the wildlife. Chipping away at the wildlife tree, yeah. Imposing on uh, exactly human or you know, yeah. Exactly, it's yeah. just a it's just an animal kind of going about its life, um, just kind of crunching away the tree, and you watch it as it, you know, is. You see it kind of kind of chewing in the leaves, right? Taking in the branches. You hear that snap as it kind of works its, its jaws, its powerful jaws through some of the smaller upper branches that snap um, as it kind of like pulls the branches, starts kind of working its mandibles to kind of start chewing it in. Um, and you see it's joined by another and then another. These three rust monsters are currently just kind of chomping away at this tree during your watch. They don't appear aggressive, though. Mm-hmm. Again, they're just kind of doing their thing. Um, but you do clock them as they're okay. close to the camp, but they seem to have no real interest in it. The they're just they're they they doing a, a munch. Cool. They're doing a munch exactly. Um, yeah, he'll he'll kind of keep an eye on that throughout the watch while he's he's working on the stone, and uh, uh, when he's done, he'll just go to whoever's next and inform them of the rust monsters and head to do a sh- big sleepy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris. Yeah. As you enter your trance, <laughs> yeah, you cross you know, crisscross applesauce in the tent, eyes closed, the feeling of the waves swelling within you. You sink into the dream. This time, Cress, I need you to roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. Listen. Listen. <laughs> oh. Okay, you're my friend. <laughs> we'll be buddies. Um, that's an 18 on the dice for a 23. Get it. Yeah. With a 23, you enter into the dream. And as you're kind of entering into the dream, though, you feel this pressure 
right? As almost like a something kind of trying to encase you, hold you, and reach out for you. But your mind is strong, and you are able to repel this. I want to see it. You want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You. So I'm, 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 I want to clarify. You're yeah, not. I'm sorry. You're not failing, but you're trying to. You're. You're with your awareness of this. This presence. You're trying to kind of relate what the fuck to it. Is that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. You. Kind of. You. You shield yourself from the presence. You're aware of it, and as you kind of almost in, quite inv- invite, but kind of push back curiously. There is an acceptance. You find yourself now kind of entering, almost like kind of entering a dream. And you're not taken into this dream. You are entering this dream in a way, so you can leave at any time should you choose. But as you enter this dream space, it is now apparent that you are in like, again, a similar canyon to the one that you had fought in, right? Except the forest is a lot more vibrant, much more alive. Um, And as you kind of walk through the forest, you can feel just the presence, this sort of ancient presence, this sort of, it's almost like when you, you know, when you're kind of like hanging out with like an, you know, a senior person who just has that sense of like life and having lived a long time and you're just kind of like taking in that wisdom from them. It's similar to that, the things you've seen, right? As you're kind of now walking and you can see this region the Iron Hills region, as it looked in ages past, with the trees towering up the sides of the mountain, the hills, the, the the taste of that iron air. Even in this dream, you can almost feel it in your mouth. You can smell it in the air. And as you look towards this large, looming mountain, you watch as parts of the outer shell of it kind of shift. The stone kind of grinds, right? Um, the peak itself kind of tips backwards to reveal this ancient stone face that just beholds that just beholds you as you step in and the forest around you shifts from now that kind of old growth forest with this this kind of like iron lichen and moss and these long vines it recedes and recedes and recedes it becomes more of the forest that you know something more tame less wild until eventually you start to smell ash in the air. You start to feel a heat radiating at your back as the eyes of this stone giant lock onto yours. You see it kind of shift the head forward and as it kind of leans forward, you see the shoulders, the arms kind of coming out of the mountain. You can see the mountain was actually this creature it seemed almost like hunched over as two arms kind of kind of crouch, press into the the land on either side, the face being brought close to yours. And you see another set of arms doing the same as this creature has four arms as they kind of, and they look close down to you. And the two of you stare at each other. And I think this is a great place for us to stop for today. What the fuck, dude? No, keep going. I oh my God. Going oh, God damn it. Jesus. We're going to call it here as Cress is encountering some sort of ancient dreaming creature. The mountain's dreaming. I'm going to talk to the mountain. <laughs> well, two weeks from now, wow. we talk to the mountain. So in a couple of weeks, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, David, thank you so guys, much. David, thank that you was guys. amazing. That combat, I was so impressed. Like, wow, we. That is efficiency to its max. You guys are crazy. <laughs> I tell you, a duo campaign is scary, right? You're like, Ugh, players We're gonna die. <laughs> these guys. No, no, no. You guys have got you guys have got the strats, the moves. All right. You love a fighter that comes off like a self-sacrificing idiot. And he's like, no, 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 no. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something up my tattooed sleeves. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> David, you want to tell people where to find you, what you do? Absolutely. I, uh, David Zenokami on the internet. You can um, maybe sometimes find, catch me on Overwatch too. I've been doing a little bit of that. Hell yeah. um, but you'll probably catch me most over at the Delta Crypto channel on YouTube, um, where we run the Heroes of Hysteria Sand Sea campaign, the sibling campaign to this one, the Unearthed Inheritance campaign. Otherwise, you find me here every other Sunday um, DMing for these two fine folks. 
but and socials eventually. I'll, I'll get back yeah, to that. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> get it. That. We'll get that command in when it's good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Button. <Hello. laughs> my name is Button. My pronouns are they them. I'm blue blue Button on the internet. You can find me here on Sundays for <laughs> this campaign and for Known Realms Tolesh. And in a couple weeks, I'm doing some charity streams. I'll get back to you on that later. Hell yeah, that's a new stream. It was the. Hi everybody. <laughs> my name is Alec. My pronouns are EM. You can find me all places. On... <laughs> Fuck you. All places on the internet. Community DM. I uh, play here obviously every other Sunday as Finn Reese. Um, I am the archivist for Known Realms Telesh, which you can see later this evening. Uh, we're picking up the session three with a, a lot going on. I. Sir! Sir, I should really reel it back. I'm a bit of a dramatic bitch. Uh, socials are the best way to stay in contact with us and see what we're doing and when we're doing it. We do have a merch shop if you want to go check it out and get some stuff. <laughs> and the YouTube, the YouTube is up to date. So if you want to re rewatch some of your favorite moments. <laughs> If you want to watch some of your favorite moments or catch up if you miss a session, the YouTube is a really good place to do that. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, I love doing these double feature Sundays because by the time I have to DM, I'm like, hello? Um, so, we will see. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking. We'll see you guys at 6 p.m. EST for No Realms Till Less Session 3. Uh, hold on for <laughs> a raid. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>